And we are live. Welcome back. Magnus, your camera's out. I need you to fix it. But hello. Welcome to the Camera Quantum stuff. Dispatch on episode right. six. Episode six. We've come a long way. Oh, six. No. Oh, 07 to everyone in chat right now. Welcome back. CJ, how are you? I am not too bad. I see you're very well. You've come in choosing violence today with the Drake hat straight off the bat. Oh, man. Always, always. When do you expect different? Uh, I don't know. As soon as I bring out an Aegis hat, I'm going to be rocking that. Eason, you're on your travels today. How are you doing? I am currently en route to the Arc Orp sector, and uh, I've avoided the egg salad sandwich at the rest stop, so I'm doing fine. My guy. So, because you're missing uh, your video today, we've set you up with your favourite ship, the F7A. How's that going for you at the moment with the event? <sighs> My God. Words. Um, let's just say that is my favorite single seater ship, not the F7C, the F7A. So I'm all down for that mission to get the upgrade from the C to the A. And, um, I can't believe we're here. Like it's been like 10 years since I've seen the F7A M MK1 variant, like, so, mm. you know, seeing the, the Mark II variant come out. I mean, those of us, those of the guys that are listening, they're like Battlestar Galactica. It's bring some very nerdy memories for me um, out. So, yeah, all good things. I mean, we met last June, and I swear, probably three or four sentences in, you were like, "I can't wait for this ship to be coming out." I mean, you're gonna get your your Mark One. The first sentence that you asked me. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, "Hello, are you here for buses?" And no, I'm here for the F seven A, mate. But uh, yeah. Yeah, no one else. I mean, you, you, you're going to get yours around Invictus, but I mean, you're getting the Mark 1 and the Mark 2. It must be Christmas and your birthday all at once. That was a shock. And I think it was you guys that told me about it, which uh, which happened, what, three days ago? Yeah. Yeah, about that. Yeah, that was that was crazy. Um, but we, we've been, the community's wait, been waiting a long time to f find out what's actually happening with that upgrade. Um, and uh, you know it's been limbo, and a lot of people thought that nothing's going to happen. But the fact that they're going to offer now a full ship for it—that's um, very, very kind. Um, so thank you, CIG. Yeah, I don't know what's going on with my camera. Ah, uh, I tell you what, let's work about that in the background. I'll generate a new link for you and send it over. But the main thing is, we've got you on audio, Magnus. How's your week going? Uh, pretty good, pretty good. I just got a bunch of stuff done, and now I get to enjoy the game for a week before I leave and miss the rest of this amazing event, which is kind of, kind of sad. But you know, I'm glad the event's happening. I mean, I'm sure someone can step in for you and take over the account. And yeah, get, get you the upgrade because I, I don't know if it's going to make a repeat. You know, no, it probably won't. And, it, and I honestly, I kind of hope it doesn't because I like the idea of uh, these finite things. Yeah, finite things. It it gives them value. And I don't mean monetary value, I just mean actual in-game value. So yeah, I agree with that. That original F7A Mark I upgrade, was it $20 back in 2013? And no yes. one else is going to have them, apart from the old and bold. Oh, that's pretty awesome. That there is pretty exciting. I'm glad for the people who are getting that. The, the tragedy is you could, all, you could buy more than one. I'm kicking myself now, going, oh my god. Yeah, I don't even. Where was I in 2013? Afghanistan, all places. Coming back, but you wouldn't know anything about that, would you, CJ? Um, no, I wouldn't. Um, <laughs> I like to keep my hands clean and sit behind the desk and, and not do too much work. Um, <laughs> someone's got to, hey. So someone's got to, mate. Someone's got to. How are you finding the overdrive? If there's, anyone from CI, if there's anyone from CIG listening, can you please donate an, an a upgrade to One Dark because he was in Afghanistan when that was happening. I mean, Just shouting off. out, yeah, yeah, spreading out democracy. <laughs> yeah, it was for Veterans Day as well. That's not just you. That's not just US. I'm pretty sure. If I'm not military, his, so I wouldn't know. If you track his bank account on the day they were released, he was probably on Bastion KFC or something like that. So don't 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 sympathise with him. Uh, Bastion they have KFC there. Yeah, there's a KFC. Uh, there's also a um, a Pizza Hut. There's a Mackey's. 
He's like getting oh, in DMV wow. twice. No, they do that in the UK as well. <laughs> so what do you guys think of the of the Mark II variant? Like, have you had a chance to fly that? I haven't, personally. Um, however, being a stats person, I am. Um, I've done a lot of analysis on the stats between the hard points, between all of the, the Hornet variants now. Um, and boy, the Mark IIs make it spicy. Um, yeah. With the, the DPS output they can put is, is ridiculous. So it's sort um, of on par with the Hurricane? Um, I can do those numbers for you now. Um, but currently, the Hornet Ghost, I've done a full ballistic loadout um, just to get the same numbers. So everything's got the same weapon hard uh, the same type of weapon on so it's the same like dps value you look nice. at 30 3100 for the hornet ghost the hornet mark ii the f7c hornet mark ii sorry can get 3600 so already that's a 500 over 500 dps increase pure off that um the alpha takes it even higher because it has the bull turret which hopefully is transferable to the hornet mark ii um yeah so then the value is going to be the same. The only thing that would be different is the missile loadout, which between the Hornet F7A and the F7C um, is an extra 11k DPS from missiles. So the thing, I'm not sure how well you guys remember, but like um, the CIG stated that pretty much all the ships that were, would be delivered or like players could purchase would always be civilian variants. So the Mark One Hornet was the F7C. You got the F8C Lightning. But the thing that I think is so special about this event, it's the first military spec ship that is of a value that I think pretty much most people that back the game could afford. Um, that actually is mil spec. Like the the only other mil spec ship that I can think of, I believe the Idris M is the only other proper military spec ship. And obviously that's like 1,500. So that that price there is just not reachable for most people, myself included. So the fact you that they- You can't just buy it either. Yeah. So the fact that they've done, they've, they've done it so you purchase the civilian variant, but releasing this event that's currently going on, it's a bit sketchy for the first round. I think we could all agree. Um, but the fact that it goes on to you know, offer you if you complete all stages, uh, F7C to F7A upgrade. I mean, that's really exciting. <laughs> so, so just... having flown the ship over the past couple of days, I went and did some uh, some of the tracks actually in game, not on the uh, Arena Commander. And uh, you know, it, it's not going to win races, but it's fun to fly. It handles really well. I don't I don't count DPS like. Uh, like CJ does, I'm more into the handling aspects of the ship, but it handles it handles nice. As far as a uh, medium to heavy fighter, I don't know what the. It's weird because some one thing says heavy, the other one says medium. I don't know which it is. It's it's kind of like it feels like it's got the agility between a light and a medium, but got the DPS of a heavy. So, <laughs> in terms of like power creep, I think we could be definitely a bit of a power creep in this area but um it, it feels so good to fly um and uh, it's got a decent range if you put like the civilian grade b quantum drive on it as well which i think is the voyager um so recommend that um yeah i i stuck you know. i stuck the atlas on because i had one and oh, nice. you, you could fly everywhere in that thing everywhere I, I think I went across the system, like from from uh, Orison to, to Microtech. I went back and forth. I want to say three times before I had the fuel up. So I mean, that's pretty crazy. Yeah, that is crazy because I went across in my um, C two, and that's got a size three um, military quantum drive. And I went from, I think, Crusader to Art Corp. And uh, I, I went through 50% of my quantum fuel, and I was just like, how's this possible? This is a size three quantum drive. What's going on? So civilian drives, they, they're really good for the distance. Um, yeah. The A is not super fast, but boy, it gives you the, and the Atlas there, the you know, civilian A. It's not yeah. super fast. You're not crossing it and 
in a blink of an eye. But, you know, if you want to smoke a joint or, uh, sorry, uh, a cigarette or whatever you guys can do legally over there uh, and uh, come back, you'll, you'll, you'll be there in time. Have tea. Yep. I'm Definitely. Tea and I love my tea. Oh, my don't know um, about you guys. If you want the if you want the, the stats on the quantum drive, the uh, F seven A Hornet Mark twos can do seventy uh, seventy nine point five million kilometers um, with an Atlas drive. So there that's Mark Tech to Hurston twice and some. Wow. Uh, Crusader to Hurston twice. Yeah. And some fuel for leftover. Yeah, yeah. That that's what I'm saying. I flew back and forth because I was doing uh, those missions flying around in it, and it was pretty good. Like I said, it's not fast, but it's got distance. There's something else from those missions that, that's been dropping that both Magnus and I appreciate. I don't know about you guys, but um, it's not just ships being dropped, but the new armor that's coming with the missions is pretty spicy as well. It looks good. Yes. yes. I love the demon helm. The demon helm looks awesome there. The, uh, the medium face mask. Mm. Love it. The only place I've seen it is on you I used to... last night. I've done, must be 12, 13 bunkers now. I've not encountered a single one. Yeah, it it's pretty rare because even when the guys, the mediums come out, they're still wearing those weird red face masks. Mm. Uh, but yeah, I don't know. They, they are pretty rare, I guess. I, I've only seen it on the five out of five. So... When you actually get the fight, which is the six, six uploads, uploads yeah. then then it seems to come out then. Oh, wow. We got to silver in audience. Hey, to silver. <laughs> oh. One and ace bear. So has anyone <laughs> seen the Evocati patch notes? Because we can talk about them now. Um, <laughs> has anyone seen the Evocati PT patch notes that dropped? I haven't had a yes. chance as I'm en route. Um, one thing I want to bring up has the star map update been taken out of 2 3? I swear it was in 2 3. I think it was it, elements it, it, of, not the whole thing. Yeah, it, yeah, yeah, it has. Blocked, so they'll have to replace all of it. Because it has not been. Go on. It has not been taken out of the official drop of 2 3. It might not be in this version that they're testing on. Uh... On uh, which I'm call it right now, but it, 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 as far as they have said, it is still in in uh, the P two P two PU release of uh, three two of, three uh, three two three. Yeah, yeah. I just saw on the Evo patch notes, and there's a lot of stuff that isn't on there. Um, however, yeah. like it's it that for me is the biggest feature of two three is the star map overhaul. Yeah, they could honestly remove, and I mean they would be removing so much good stuff i'm I'm not lying here but if they i think no, i think the thing good. that we're all waiting for is that star map for you <laughs> yeah. yeah i'm I'm definitely definitely excited about the star map to me the thing that i'm excited about is the hangers because i've been waiting for a better way to to move stuff around the thing that makes me sad is my favorite part of the hangar which was the vehicles is going to be in a later iteration of the two two uh the three two three sure but i think a, a thing that i'm looking forward to is um the item bank unique item recovery um system which i think is tied in with the freight elevators so from what i understand and correct me if i'm wrong here i probably am but it's um when you buy stuff from the subscriber store, uh, if you lose it in game, there's no way to reclaim it back um, until you, another patch drops. So this is a big thing where it's stopping players going, yeah, I don't want to purchase anything because I'm just going to lose it straight away. But if they actually have an effective way of recalling it back, um, that might open up, um, that might uh, allow people to go, you know what, I won't lose it straight away. So I'm going to start purchasing more, which ultimately would be very good for the game because that means more money for Cloud Imperium, um, which is a good thing because then that's more money going into building the game. Um, yeah. So yeah. that's something yeah. I'm looking forward to. Also, it's just nice to see those in the wild. Like you never see anyone wearing them. Yeah, definitely. 
And it, yeah. it gives people who don't buy them the chance to get them because now that somebody's out there wearing them, you're going to be like, okay, I'm shooting that guy and taking that crap. <laughs> yeah, I want I, that Christmas gun. <laughs> it's when I see someone wearing some nice stuff in um, in Terrafim Station and I'm just going to be like, I'm going to follow what hangar you're going to. What <laughs> ship did you spawn in? Are you spawning that cutter? Yeah. I'm going to sideline you... help you. Were you in Hangar 13 yesterday? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, not that yeah. synch- not that synchronizers are uh we're, we're we're not pirates we don't condone piracy yep and not even synchronizers i'm pretty su- yeah, synchronous yeah. synchronous we don't condone privacy but we will sleep with you on board your ship and then take your trousers the next morning after yes. i'm trading you a size 9 torpedo for your loadout yeah, yeah yeah we don't condone piracy but if we find you at a bunker wearing the stuff we want yeah <laughs> You better get naked. Yeah. So you might accidentally trip on a step, knock yourself out, wake up with none of your gear. <laughs> Whilst we're on the uh, issue of armor, GFA in the chat uh, has uh, reminded us that pledge item recalling is on the way via the terminal in your persistent hangar. This is going to be Ooh, super yeah. useful. Just double checked. It's still tentative. It's still on the progress track. Not quite committed then. Not quite yeah. committed, but nothing is committed for point two three. Nothing at yeah, all. There. Nothing. Still even even yet. though there was, even though there was a verbal commitment, it's always tentative. <laughs> You'd be yeah. happy to know, Master Mode is still tentative, so there's still the chance that it doesn't come. <laughs> still the chance. Nah, we're getting yeah, Master Mode. Gonna... We, we, we like, I'm in the band camp of we need it. We need it now so that we can get it massively tweaked to, so it doesn't look like what it actually is when we first receive it. <laughs> I'm hoping we do get, um, like GFA says, like an insurance system for your armors because then it'll actually give a lot of people a reason to pledge for armor. Um, I know I would straight away buy like the red alert pack, like this, you know, the 60 quid one that's got everything in, yeah, uh, yeah, because I know that. I can get it back. What's the point of you yeah. paying 60 quid for like four armor sets, five armor sets, or three actually? I can't remember. But if I'm going to lose them straight away because the game decides to 30k, not that 30k recovery doesn't work. It sometimes, most of the time works, but I'm not taking that chance with real life stuff. I, f- I feel we're kind of like a small podcast, so I, I can say this, but um, One Dark, do you remember when we had that kind of. Uh lucrative gameplay with um the salvaging missions linked with a specific event yes and you and i in one sale made around about 78.6 million yes i remember it well well this is one of the reasons why i'm looking forward to the um cargo lifts inside the hangars is that I believe you're going to be able to actually store cargo now in there. So you're going to be able to hoard all this sort of interesting loot inside your cargo so that when specific events drop, you should be able to ferry it over to one location quite quickly and sell it whilst getting all the event bonuses. So they've got a lot to work on at the moment, Cloud Imperium. So I think it'll be a few, few patches before they work this one out and and patch it unless they are watching and they do tweak it because of this and then that means that you know we're doing something right here no that would be legitimate gameplay though i mean that that's the whole point you can hoard stuff and you just wait for that event that's legitimate gameplay nice you're not you're not i mean you 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 weren't like doing anything that wasn't legitimate you would you were selling the drugs to the people who were buying it yeah did I, did, he, <laughs> I did. I did. I did see that and I was like, wait, what's happened here? He's joined the chat? How? GFA, GFA's joined. <laughs> wait, go back to I'm sure he's not expecting to see himself, but like he looks like someone said something gnarly in the chat and he's gonna have words with him afterwards. Yeah. Anyway. Who said that? <laughs> it's a nice bald so, head. He's got the bald yeah. head filter on as well. Flawless. Uh, he's even got <laughs> a light that. background to reflect the, like the sun. Is he um is he up and ready for um I mean, do you wanna 
announce what a future podcast that we'll be doing here. One no, dark. no, no, no. Okay, so I'll keep well, stum about that soon. TM. Wow, well, sounds like you're going to have to do it very soon, though. Uh, uh, we'll see. We'll Possibly. See. Well, if you don't announce it, loads of OnlyFans streamers. So if you want to watch uh, some good star citizen content, well, <sighs> as we know with ship sales, they make a lot of money. As we also know from ship sales, I can't be trusted with a lot of money. So <laughs> I uh, was at the photography show yesterday at the NEC in Birmingham and I dropped a rather large amount of money on like stuff to do with the sale because those that don't know, I do photography and a little bit of videography here and there. And I had the idea of if I get these nice little Rode mic cameras, uh, microphones, I could potentially go and do something like this live um so yeah look forward to something like that popping up at some point yeah that sounds cool so we like synchronous podcast whilst at a bar citizen talking about bar citizen i've, I've worked on set before look how good we this turned outside. out look how good that turned <laughs> out honestly That's we incredible. could do it outside um cloud Cloud Imperium games in Manchester and get like <laughs> then just uh, some of the stuff come and like I don't know what's it photo bomb us or like podcast bomb us I quite like the idea of that just set up outside, outside. CIG and just be like open your door <laughs> yeah. open your door just yeah. put a stereo above your head if you leave me now take away the biggest part of me Sit out there with some pizza or something and say, hey, if you guys come talk to us, we'll give you pizza. <laughs> mm, and they're hungry, they're hungry game developers. They might they might jump on that. It would just be like, we've got the code, how to implement Sandworm. Do you want it? Come out. <laughs> come out. We've got Sandworm well, code. Actually, did you see did you see that um someone did do like a um a Photoshop thing of like the pledge for the sandworm, and it's I th it's still it's like mid fighter or sort of like it's sort of like they called it sub subterranean dominance or something like that. And I was just I saw that I was like that's brilliant. I want to know so, how that's going to factor in with base building. Are you going to have your base and the sandworm's going to come out and just boom by base? <laughs> you still have the land, I mean, but you have the base. Well, with Voip and Voip, uh, was it Voip and Voip? You're going to be like, what deep? And then the, the sandworm's just going to go away. <laughs> I know this is a Star Citizen uh, podcast, but there is a game coming out soon where you will build a base and a sandworm may eat it. <laughs> yes, it looks quite uh, interesting, that game. Tasty. I may yep. have to play it. I don't like sand. It's mm. coarse and it gets everywhere. Mm. No, yeah. you do not play any other game. You play a Star Citizen, you pray to Chris Roberts, and you <laughs> only spend... The only sand I like is the sand from Jamar when we're low flying. That's, That's the only it. sand I like. Yeah. Good answer. So... so talking fauna. about Jamar. Yeah, Fauna. This is it. Fauna. You're going Here we go. I am. Here we go. Video. This is the hey. video that we all woke up to. Yes, was it yesterday? Can you? Can you just you told run me that? about it now. Uh, you can run it. Nice. Oof. You know what we need to do? We need to have a meme of a clever girl from Jurassic Park. <laughs> <laughs> I should all be destroyed. I am not sure. If I want to go into caves anymore, especially when Jared's really? like, "Oh, we include stuff in the game now. We don't even tell you about." Can I you like it? Can you honestly imagine? Whatever I see there, I'm just gonna be like, sh down the mic, shooter, shooter. <laughs> what is the the ultra uh, rare gem called? Oh, it begins with a T, I think. It does doesn't really matter. Uh, Chat. What's uh, the name of the gem? The one that's like a one so, in like a thousand spawn rate. CJ's already on. Janalite, there we go. Thank you, combat. Just yeah, the carrot. So imagine you're on the Janalite hunt. You're deep in the darkest cave. And then whoa. I'll pet that dog. Yeah, I want to pet that dog. It's not actually worth it anymore because Janalite, they massively reduced 
the price of what it was because originally when it dropped it was like a million or something ridiculous each but i've seen someone sell it on a um youtube video recently it was like 10 grand or something it, it was more than that probably but it was not worth going out with the sort of lucrative gameplay that you could get from a reclaimer and salvaging which was really really sad because if there's something that's rare mm. like that it should be like ridiculous i think so with that, yeah, do you I think it like removes the impetus for uh, unless you are a new player with a forty-five pound pledge and you've like flown down with just your multi-tool, it kind of removes the point of doing that game loop if there's nothing to go down there for. If you've got like a carrot on the end of the stick that is going to be janelite that's worth God knows how much it that it should be, you know, super rare. Then yeah, that should that should have that price. And this then they're trying like with us when we did the the reclaimer and the salvaging and stuff. Are they aiming to <clears throat> channel the players down a particular path just to test those game loops? I I think that's what happens a lot is they make something super lucrative just to get you to go that way, just so they can get all that information and then they balance it. Then you're like, oh okay, guess it doesn't hmm. pay out. As I'm well gonna switch anymore. to something else now. Yeah. I, as far as going in the caves and finding that, I mean, I, I know everyone's like, it's got to be a monetary thing. But there's times I just fly around in my ship and I live on a planet and I don't make garbage for money. But I, it's just kind of just doing the life thing. Like living on Daymar in my in my cutty black mining with my rock miner. I could have made a lot more money just hopping in my prospector or my mole and mining. But I don't know. I think that's a really healthy way to look at it. Like, I mean, I when it when a patch starts and everything's been wiped, I'll just grab like my C1 and I'll fly to pretty much all the outposts and I'll just loot and I'll just keep looting and then I'll do bunkers and I'll just keep looting and that's how I sort of like start out. It's a fun way to start. You get loads of armor, weapons, other interesting stuff like you know cruise bottles, glow sticks, everything that you need to. I do other stuff. And then when I'm going, you know, I want to start making some actual money, then I'll pull a group together and and probably gravitate towards the system that's being tested the most because that's generally the most lucrative, like Magnus is saying. Mm. Really like adding uh, animals to caves and stuff would also not necessarily... I know we've talked about like career loops for like hand mining balls and stuff like that, but imagine a clear... Um, clear vermin from this cave mission cave cave and it's you gotta go hunt these dogs down and I, um, I, instead of petting that dog you pet it with a devastator shotgun and you, yeah, you no i i like i like the idea of intergalactic hunts going off and collecting heads you can stick on the wall of your ship i know that's not uh that's your uh, inner american though you just yes. want to feel things get on. I, I would honestly like to see like people being able to go to caves, coming back to their ships, not like scanning themselves before they get in their ship and then they're halfway back to their home location and there's some sort of infestation breaking out on their ship and they're having to sort it out. Their chest explodes and a little... <laughs> <laughs> They're just like, you know, just in you're just in one of the Jeffrey tubes and you've got like a swarm of things like crawling down towards you. You're just like holding shift and like sliding down really quick. You need to stop off at the restroom before you land off at Microtech and there's a face hugger in the bathroom. Yeah. yeah. Oh. I still want I still want Cloud Imperium games to um put a egg salad sandwich in rest stops in like a really dodgy place and like a label saying don't eat this. <laughs> and like it's it just be it'd be like it'd be it'd be so I think it was Futurama that did that where Fry had like an egg salad sandwich and I, that was ages ago though. Oh, coming up. Sounds like a Kelco oh. type of shop. So we got fauna. Fauna's coming. That's exciting. I'm excited. I, I want to see the space whales. I want to see other stuff. Like I, I want to just space monster. cows. You want to go hunting? Yes, space cows. No, I, of course I want to go hunting. That's 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 just like a, you know, a thing. Would well, you, you hunt a space hunting. cow? Well, you don't hunt cattle. You exactly. I mean, maybe maybe space cows are different. I know I wouldn't because I'm not a monster, but like, 
Mm. If we can get anyone oh. from CIG listening, though, hunting missions, um, if they were on the same planet, would be, I think, really cool. Like, do you know um, Lawville, where you can get the metro loop that goes around the perimeter? You get the perimeter metro. If there's, like, packs of animals, like these dogs there, and you basically go and clear out an infestation of these dogs, and you get money. It adds, like, on-planet gameplay. So you don't have to like go and fly away and do something. To or you've yeah. got like a rare mission for the uh, the beast of Microtech. Yeah, the beast of Microtech. Tell that, like, me. it'd be like you know the, one of the rarest creatures in game, but people will want to go and find it. People, will, you know, they, they can leave little ground sign and little hints. But yeah, yeah. its spawning would be as rare as like Janelite, and it was, its range where it could roam would be massive. Yeah, um, and, and it's just a bigger version, and it yeah. has loads of little minion dogs around it, and it's just a big dog. I think. Well, I, I mean, think, well, yeah, go ahead. Th- doesn't Microtech also have that crazy Yeti creature that's supposed to spawn on it? That'd be cool to hunt. No, that's Canada. <laughs> the, what, that the is the beast of Microtech. The beast. <laughs> the beast. Yeah, it's like a Yeti, right? Mm. The beast of Montreal. Yeah. <laughs> Let's um, take it to like so Red Dead, isn't it? They did mention though um, that you know hides and stuff from fauna would be usable in crafting armor potentially down the line. Um, so you know things like the meat from an animal or something like that, you'd be able to use in cooking recipes if when if and when they do bring cooking in, which will happen because you know why do farming as a gameplay? Why have all these harvestable crops if you can't put them together and do something with them? Yeah, well, that's no, it. Yeah, but oh, cooking as well. Box. Inevitable. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, definitely need something to do with cooking, you know? We'll just talk about One cooking. All I can think about is taking the Drake Cutter out in like a, make it like a Winnebago, so like retrofit it as a drugs lab and have it like from Breaking Bad. But like oh. it spawns a mission for, you know, there's a tip off in this area. We have reports of uh, illegal drug manufacturing. Track the person down. Like, that'd be cool. So you've got to be collecting your resources, putting it into the machine, it takes a while to generate, but meanwhile, there's almost like a beacon going on. You've got to try and evade. Yeah, I reckon it'd be cool. Yeah, it, uh, combat comments like Drake, haha, but yeah, it would be a Drake. No, the Drake would be the perfect drug-making ship. No one's going to be making drugs in the late 90s. Breaking Bad, how close to Breaking Bad are you think the mission's going to go? Do you think there's going to be a bit where like the CDF are chasing you down on Microtech and you're running 50 meters in just your underwear and maybe one of those Hurston gas masks? We definitely have it. Um, the mission pops up and it's just like, we're hooking Jesse. <laughs> to start doing Science! Answers. Or you you fly up to it, and do you know when you get the um when you get scanned and you can see the guard in uh, the MFD terminal because they're talking to you, it should just be um I'm not in danger, I am the danger, um you know. But obviously, crotch view of I'm not in danger. Um, no. guys, I'm I'm looking at the patch notes for for three two three, or mm-hmm. actually the re- release view, I should say. And there's one big thing that I feel has been heavily anticipated by the community that we haven't touched on, um, and that's Arena Commander custom lobbies, implementing oh. custom player-made lobbies back into Arena Commander. For racing, that will be very exciting. Well, it means we'll be able to hold org league boards. It'd be just so much yeah. easier and less painful to run. As long as you can choose which map you're racing on. Yes. Esports, that's going to unlock a whole wealth of potential as well. FPS training for new players. You don't have to worry about getting to your ship, getting your pants on, get to the right place at the right time and going. You can just meet up Friday after work, play, and just get into the meat of it. Mm. Yep. You don't yeah, have no, that's going to be really good, the custom. That's going to make a big difference, the custom. And be it... Like I said, just for racing, I don't know how many times we tried to get to do some racing stuff and we had to go through a hundred of the tracks we didn't want to race so that we could 
up on the four we actually enjoyed. So that'll yeah, be nice. It, it'll be good for like uh, practicing as well. Um, and also, it depends if they mess around with player caps. Are we going to be able to do 50 versus 50 org battles? Like, are we going to get a dedicated server for a custom? Or are we going to have to pay for servers the way that most games do? I, I mean, there's too many. There's too many uh, variables. It, it is a bit of a shame, though, like bringing private lobbies for the, for racing and stuff like that for you guys, and then also bringing master modes in at the same time so racing gets left in one hand and and sort of improved with the other. See, I'm confused. Like, so you don't have to fly it in the... So you could just be in the quantum mode, which gives you... This, you don't need shields when you're racing anyway, so... And you're not shooting. So I don't, I don't know that it... You could still th 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 uh, boost and everything in the uh, travel mode, right? Yeah, but doesn't it prioritize uh, forward boosters rather than being in nav mode where it prioritizes? Well, it doesn't necessarily prioritize, but you get more power to lateral thrusters. Isn't there an element of that changing? I, I honestly, that I have no answer on. I, I sadly... I've not played it. I've not not done much with the master modes it's every every time i get in there i get really bored really quickly and i yeah i i think that's quite a, a a wide sort of feeling as well like i mean there's like i i also too feel like i get bored pretty quick of it but i also do see that the group combat is a lot smoother and more in tune um there's less people like overshooting their targets and stuff like that which is great but it like they keep saying it's the 1v1s that that is where the fun is um that's just severely lacking at the moment um i don't really go into nav mode at all in master modes i'm usually just staying in the combat mode because i just don't want to switch out because you just get toast the moment that happens I, I mean, and I, I listen to a lot of our PVPers. I get feedback from them, so I go with what they say. Uh, I the, the good thing for me is, is when we are doing group stuff, I can actually catch up to them for once. That's nice. Because normally I'm chasing them in an entire fight. I get two shots on, but they already blew up the guy we were hunting. But this way I can keep up with them. But otherwise, other than that, in the 1v1s, it, it I found... I found it boring, and in the uh, the PVE stuff, just doing the pirates, I I just got really bored really quickly with it. I don't know, but they'll probably tweak it. Maybe I hope. Who knows? Well, it's it's. Uh, I know it's been tested loads, but it's still when it releases, going to technically be like a two zero experience. So, not everyone is going to be happy with it. Like I have not touched master modes once. Um. Actually, I have, and um, I absolutely <laughs> destroyed one dark in combat. So I, I think Master Mage is pretty good in that regard. But if it makes my Corsair stronger, I'm all for it. Which ship was I? Yeah, that's the thing I noticed. Like everything right now at the moment for Master Modes, everyone's using the Andromeda. And like it's even if you're flying a light fighter, you cannot outmaneuver. <laughs> you can't get behind anything. It's just, I don't know. Maybe, maybe I'm just too rusty now, and my piloting skills aren't that great. But the rain, like they've slowed down ships to make engagements closer, but they've also increased the range of weapons. So I don't know how that works, but I do know that when you go, when you go into like um squadron battle or something like that like you'll see that most people are flying an andromeda or a vanguard something really heavy with a lot of armor a lot of dps because that's what it's come down to um andromeda seems to be the favorite but i'm interested in knowing what you guys think about master modes and also what the audience think about it but also i'm interested in knowing what they're looking forward to from the next patch. Can we do a shout out? Of course you can. You've just done one. I don't know. Um, I tried Master Mode Racing when it first launched, and I just 
just pure crashed everywhere. Uh, I felt like I had no upstrafe. I just couldn't turn off like at the same speeds I was going previously. Um, I believe it's been tweaked. I still need to check it out. But for a lot of the nuances, such as the whole like shield situation, where people would just be able to run away and there's not much you can do, when it comes to interdicting, there's still questions that need answers. And um, I don't feel like it's fleshed out enough or that we know enough about it for us to have confidence in it being released. So I think a lot of people are just going to go, do you know what, Master Modes has just launched, I'm not playing this patch. And, yeah. you know, I, I can see that being a thing, which would be a shame. That is a yeah. shame, and it's the worst thing that can happen because the way that something like this gets solved is by playing it, figuring out what you don't like about it, and vocalizing that on Spectrum, which, you know, people like A1, they're very effective in getting their voice out to the community. He did a video on his points of why Master Modes wasn't working. A lot of the points I agreed with, but one thing that I was a bit frustrated by was that he didn't put a spectrum post summarizing his points and putting a link in his description on his video that may have changed by now but you know cig needs constructive feedback to make a decent decision and that's something that the community is struggling in doing and the only people that are getting it across are the evocati testers that might not be the best pvp pilots so they could be loving this and that's why cig is sticking with it um so the the one problem I, I see with that, and I think that's a great idea, but I pretty much, I swear I read something or they just said it last day. They want, they want you to tell them how you feel and what you're feeling in the game, but they don't want you to give suggestions on how to fix it. And I kind of feel like, I don't know, and I don't want to attack anyone. I'm, yeah, screw that, I'm going to. I think Yogi is really set on setting it the way he wants it and he doesn't really give a crap what you think about it and that's just what i got from him but it's their game i i base well, it on the way he was on on a podcast recently yeah tomato tomato's podcast right yes which was a good podcast and you know um i think it was really cool that they actually managed to do that i i first watched salty mike's reaction to it and i found that watching that one gave a lot more different perspective to watching the actual base podcast um i think i think the reason why they're not taking much feedback at the moment is because they realize that this is master modes is pretty much version zero um so they're getting they're getting it to a point where they can take feedback and i th i think they definitely they definitely will take feedback because they're modeling this this game on chris's kind of vision um and he wants it to be a kind of like world war ii fighter simulator in space um but then again it is an mmo and if it has a low player base it won't survive. So there's that. How much can Chris's vision apply and attract enough people to keep this thing sustained? Um, and that it's going to be interesting to see if they actually manage to achieve it because they they they're not forced like other games that have publishers to um, to just release it at the drop of a hat and um, release a you know a, a version that no one's happy with. So it'll I think be interesting to see where this goes. If they managed it. A bit better potentially then it, it would make more sense so snub fighters you know, they don't need two modes don't affect those at all but affect the the damage limiter so can they fire on a hammerhead and damage it no because the shield should absolutely deflect that should people be able to run away with this though no so like almost like keep it that way um i just think if they put a bit more maybe sensible head it'd be wider uh, be accepted more widely i think yeah um, it's i think what this is good for, Master Mode's coming out. I, I'm not a, a fan of the idea of it. Not that I've got anything bad to say against it. However, it's going to condition you to how the gameplay is going to be. So when Maelstrom comes in, light fighters aren't going to be able to take out a hammerhead, for example. An arrow, a lonely arrow, is going to be able to take out a hammerhead. Not possible with the way that Maelstrom's going to work. So now, 
the change in it, so a hamhead isn't going to be able to take out a hamhead now. Uh, and an arrow isn't going to be able to take out a hammerhead now. So I, th I think as much as the gameplay is different, I think a lot of people complain because it's change. But there are reasons why they're doing it, whether it's clearing out the net code, making the coding easier, getting ready for bigger features later on. I think one thing we need to all appreciate that's coming is vehicle archetypes. I think that is going to be a big thing. You're not going to go and see your, oh, massively. your arrow and your gladius and your hornets maybe maybe the f7 alpha but they're not going to be meta now like you can't then you're not going to take out a connie and going to get rinsed by a guy in a gladius it's not going to happen it can happen if they're good and if there's more than one but then that's that's where your fleet gameplay starts to creep in whereas now hey. you can have a fury and the fury can take out hammerhead ground yeah it, it takes time the, the simple solution was that to just to make armor that those guns couldn't penetrate. Period. That's Maelstrom, though. Obviously, yeah. that's when that comes in, that's Maelstrom. And, and as far as, and I agree, there's no way a Fury should take out a Hammerhead. Of course not. That's that's a ridiculous idea. Ten Furies. No yeah. 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 Exactly. I I think I think one thing that we spoke uh, GFA. I don't know who else we spoke to about it, um, but you couldn't have a five second cooldown for your shields to regenerate. So a capital class shield or any shields should automatically start regenerating at their regeneration rate. So if you can out shit. DPS that regeneration rate, you can then whittle that shield down. Yes, I but agree with that. For example, a Fury's DPS, <clears throat> maybe two or three Fury's DPSs, should never be able to out DPS a shield regeneration rate. So therefore, it would never get the shield down. Well, it's a complicated theory. system, though, because you're going to have ballistics and stuff like that, which go through shields. So there's, it's it's a hard thing to tweak. But the thing that I like about uh, archetypes is the reason why this game's taken so long to build is because they're getting the tools behind it. But archetypes is another system where, at first, it won't be great, but when they do want to tweak a ship, they'll be able to t tweak the whole range of ships. Um, and keep that system in check and that will be really good for balancing i feel because you know right, they'll be able to go right we're going to do this across the board but then when you go to like if you've got heavy fighters one's an interdictor another one's like a fire uh, heavy fighter bomber you know all these things will have their different variants that make them slightly different and then on top of that you'll have their um the way the ship's designed, the way the wings are, that will make it more effective in flying. So things like, at first it, it will seem awful because everything will be very similar. But when they get this all tweaked down, everything will have its own characteristic in flight, in combat, in how quick it is to be taken out. Um, but it will be on one big system that they can just tweak a few things and then the whole the whole ship like i mean they've got over 200 ships like how you can't just do them single-handedly no and i guess bitching up i'm sorry go ahead can i go on, go on i guess complaining about massive modes until they get through this whatever this version zero is and the or one whatever they're calling it. it might be pointless but if they're on the wrong path they need to fix that before they release the game the other game because the other game is going to dictate what combat in this game is like period see that that's what that's what that's what a1 said and i, I somewhat disagree with that because um that they'll release a game and if they fight like the single player game will be sold once but they're like the pu is like an mmo so if they start losing <laughs> players if they find out that's because the flight model is crap they will come around and, and tweak the flight model so it's more favorable to the player base um, because they have to in order to survive. But uh, it will be weird if they release a single player game and the flight model suddenly changes and people go into the multiplayer and go, why, why is this different? Well, it's different because people didn't like how it wasn't the single player game, so we've changed it now. Like, that would just look bad. So I hope, I hope, I hope they get it right before then, but it's hard to please everyone, right? I'll go back to shield regeneration though. Um, 
depends on the type of damage incurred to the ship. So if it's just like laser repeated damage, then yeah, it should just regenerate. But if it's distortion, it's going to mess around with the electronics. So it could be that it, it that in that circumstance requires regeneration. Or are we looking at what is the base building block? And eventually when engineering comes in, if your shields go down, then maybe your circuit breaker goes. So your engineer needs to go and re, re sort it out or put a new one in. We don't know where this is going to go. For sure. And yeah. like how like elemental stuff's gonna affect it, like solar flares and stuff. Mm. That's gonna be cool. Well, um so, it's the pyro stuff. It I think does it already affect it? There's... No, I'm talking when uh, like um what's that? Uh ship supplies sort of stuff, so like capacitors oh. and, and all that circuitry when that stuff comes in. I'm really interested in knowing how sort of like um electric like electrical storms in space and solar storms are going to affect that sort of stuff because rather than just like a round going through a ship and taking out capacitor this thing's going to be ship wide <laughs> so you know are you just give like right everyone you need to stop what you're doing everyone needs to be an engineer right now yeah uh the storm in pyro right now does a i think it's just like a fake thing where they just shut your ship down but i think that their plan is for that to actually affect uh uh, affect systems so yeah as far as that storm goes that'd be cool did you guys try uh pyro when it f first released on the test thing yes uh, i've tried to stay as far away so, from pyro spoilers this this wasn't this was an evo Carti, so it was an nda but i remember um uh there was one guy in our org i believe it was holan um he was one of the first guys to get hit by a solar flare and his guy was just standing outside on the planet and the solar flare um, gave him a head, uh, like a, was it a grade three head injury? <laughs> and his character died afterwards. <laughs> so it was just like, yeah, just don't, don't stand outside because those solar flares will kill you. Mm. It's spicy. Yeah, I'm, uh, I enjoyed, I, I... I, I, I wish I would have done what CJ did and stay away from Pyro because I did go. I'm glad I, I mean, it was, it's really beautiful. It's nicely done. I'm excited about it. My regret is that the first time I'm going to see it is not from jumping through the gate, which I think would have made it a lot more exciting. Yeah, definitely. <clears throat> so but I'm why, staying. That's, that's why I'm not going to mess around with any of it first time i'm going to experience it is with the org on the carrack jumping through from stanton to pyro and witness it as it's supposed to be not yeah that in that's a good idea that'll I'm be exciting not, i've literally anytime i see pyro i just close the page not interested well i am interested very interested but don't want to know i wish i had your willpower i i couldn't stop myself i went in and it was crazy, but now I I am left with that feeling like going, it should have been a jump gate first. But I'm gonna get that feeling with other systems hopefully soon. So, um, but it's crazy that we're at that point. Um, it's crazy that they've managed to have a player jump from Crusader to Pyro. I'm sorry, Stanton to Pyro, and it's crazy that we're looking at, you know like uh, servers with like 400 people on them. I mean, that's just insane. And someone was telling me that their rig was getting 120 frames on Star Citizen and we've got this new tech coming in and the new patch to to help out stream sort of like higher definition stuff. So, you know, the frames are going to get better. The game's going to get smoother. And we've got server caps now of like 400 that are being tested. It's just mind-blowing where this is going yeah it's madness um i've heard mixed accounts of the 400 player cap i've heard people playing at uh, 380 odd people and it being fine but then some people have been saying that the desync was just insane um but i think that's what the 0.23 is supposed to be it's um stability and then obviously once they've done more either cutty tests of the uh, dynamic server mission then it should probably be a lot nicer and smoother by the time we get it hopefully Very i would cool. really love to know more about like the technical side of of um 
server meshing and, and and how it works like how do you get the game being smooth whilst having 400 people on board a ship or something like that that's an aspect that i don't really have the credentials to understand but um i'm very much interested in that area it, it, it has to be explained to you by a guy with crazy hair pointing to things that swirl and twirl and you can't and the math flying past you with squares and pi it'll just it'll just melt your mind don't think yeah. about it he's got like warhammer figurines like painted on his top and um you can just see that he's like slowly dying inside but he's really interested about what he does yes it's 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 space math crazy witch programming that you just can't understand did you see did you see the first dune uh the original one (laughs) uh i guess so yeah i mean the the guy who were the the navigators that took like spice and then just turned into brains oh yeah yeah yeah. the guild basically these are the guys that are running the servers Like this, the uh, the guy you were talking about reminds me of this dude. <laughs> I can't see. Yeah, we got to wait for it to pop up the stream. Oh, you're watching the stream. You're not watching the uh, the virtual camera. Yeah, yeah, yeah that guy, that the alien, uh, the alien guy. Yeah, the ancient alien dude. Uh... <laughs> Is that the one where he says chips? Yeah, ships. I love that meme. Did not realise I was not showing the virtual camera. My apologies. It has. That's all good. Yeah, no, um, what else? What else is there? What else is coming? Oh, that's uh, such a nice picture. Oh Legionnaire. Legionnaire. Uh, is that coming? Legionnaire. At some point. Uh, you think they... that's dropping? I don't I think, think it's, it's dropping. Yeah. It's my I'll most. In the next year. So. Oh, it's well. They showed it in the video, didn't they? Yes. yes. If I, yeah. If I showed you my hanger now, um, the most recent sh- uh, ship for paint that I've got is that black one for the Legionnaire. The shadow strike. It back. I bought it back, and I also bought the Legionnaire, um, at the weekend. Nice. So that was why well, I say bought it back. I completed my CCU chain, so it's. I managed to get it cheaper than a Cutlass Black. It's, not one, bad. it's one of the few ships I'm thinking of using a referral reward to upgrade to. Because I know I I'm have. just going to want it. That's going to be my daily, so why not have? Why not be a referral? Mm. I'm going to be, I'm going to be flying that one evening, and I'm going to have the Halo soundtrack blaring my ears <laughs> so hard that <laughs> I'm going to pass out. Oh, man. The second the Legionnaire was shown, I bought it. I had to have it right away, and uh, I'm excited about that ship. I and I was excited to see it in the the which one call it there. So the the slide, mm. the stills they put up. Yeah. So that, I hope it. I the, I don't. I mean, how many ships can they release this Invictus? It would just melt people's heads and wallets. I think they've got a few coming out. They've got they've got the F seven A, they've got the F seven A Mark Two and Mark One. They've got um I mean there's a another potential one that I'm not sure if we can talk about. It's been hinted at. Which one's that one? Um Oh the one yeah. Yeah. And the, then uh... Uh, the Polaris, I mean, they they just said that's really far through its gray box, so it's that's on amazing. final detailing. Is it? I actually think if it's on final detailing, I wouldn't be surprised if there's a chance that it could be... I know this is a really po- optimistic thinking, and it's probably not going to happen, but I honestly do think we're going to get the Polaris before the Idris. And I do think we're going to get the Idris at the end of the year. So, if you know, we are getting get the Polaris. 
I think we are it. getting the pliers for the address. I think they Super Mac that. was talking about this the other day, and he, he's sort of like gone full conspiracy mode, and he's like, "Yeah, we're getting that pretty soon. It's quite far along." I, I honestly, I honestly think May, Ju- May, July time will get the Polaris, and then uh, Idris will be at like December, start January next year. So, so here's my theory on the Idris. Because they said we're not getting it until they release Squadron. They announced Squadron at uh at um their big Citizen Con, Citizen Con in in England. Yeah. Yep, that's why they're doing it there. So they they announce it there. They release it by Christmas. That's my super optimistic uh uh thing on that. And he said because uh, Citizen Con's in October. That gives them. A bunch of months for pre-sales, bang it out and for Christmas, release it on Christmas, and they rake in an insane amount of money for that game. Chris gets to do his his big show. I mean, you know that's going to make him super excited to announce that at Citizen Con this year. Yeah, I reckon it's coming. And then, you know, and then like it's going to be. When we start seeing the push, they've been they've been talking about the push to Star Citizen one point zero, which is obviously beta, um, and potentially the first sort of actual proper live. When they go into beta, there won't be sort of wipes, as we've been having on the alpha. But obviously, when they go from beta to actual proper live release, they'll have a they'll probably have another wipe then. But um, it's it's just very crazy how quickly it's all going. But one thing I'm really interested to think about is how are they going to adapt the subscription um, from what they've currently got now? Are they going to tweak it to more in-game events so that it helps fund content that keeps the community coming in and buying ships? That's the sort of thing that I'd like to see more about. I would like to see more transparency on on CRG's side regarding master modes and all these features because like I understand that people take their words um, out of a certain way and hold them to it, but like I I would really love to know more about what's going on under the hood. Well, from what I heard, there was a lot of arguments to get it into the game, and they've really just sort of cutthroated and gone for it. I'm just hoping it's the right move. Well, I think going back to the previous point where they ask not for, they didn't want feedback on master modes is because you know the normal people are just going to be like easy way to fix master modes, remove master modes. That's probably why the reason they've said they don't want feedback yet. Um. Uh, so. I don't want to sound like that's like I'm not against that honestly. It, it, people's most people's feedback is is just feeling us anyways, right? Yeah. So the, I I understand like the worst thing you can do for a game, and I've seen it happen so many times, is let the community dictate everything because you can't make everyone happy. And that is a straight up fact. Did that happen in Eve? Because I know you were quite a big Eve player, right? No, no, Eve wasn't the. Eve didn't have a problem. The Star Wars Galaxy is a good example of that. But then Star yeah. Wars Galaxies did the opposite, right? Where they just said, ah, screw the players. We're going to make the game we want. And then he... New game totally enhancements. Yeah, yeah, so... That's what they... I was telling uh, One Dark uh, uh, earlier. I was mentioning to him that, you know, uh, before, this was like just the other day, you know, um, but this was... This was... A, this was on, uh, p- people should check this out because... It's really important what Magnus is um, saying here, because like when this happened when World of Warcraft came out, um, they had a really sort of intelligent way of doing the skill system, and then they butchered it to, for a much simpler way, and a lot of the player base left, and they didn't change it, and they just stuck to their guns, and um, yeah, it, it they lost like fifty percent of their community of like overnight. Yeah, I watched those videos you sent me on on the uh, the base building for it as well, man. Like that's one game I never really got into, and never even bought. 
But um, yeah, I can see why they would use. I know you've mentioned it as well as one of their sources of inspiration. Yeah. I think it's one of the most important games that backers and Cloud Imperium games can use. Like one of the main guys that was doing missions for that, his sort of ethos was most MMOs now go for like a daily theme to keep players playing. So it's like you've got your daily missions to keep coming in. But the reason why what they wanted to do with Star Wars Galaxies was to make it a community-based thing so items would fall apart so that community would need to band together, build more and sell them. And that kept that keeps the economy going. Um, and they did... I mean, it's still going today. And I think Yogi said that they've got... They've got start Cloud Imperium games have got ambitions for like ten years down the line. So it's really nice to know this game we're investing in, you know, has got ambitions for that long. Um I do think they will make it because the amount of effort they put into it, but I'm optimistic. I'm obviously I get called White Knight a lot. Um <laughs> a few people, but it's just like you know, it's, I feel they're putting the effort in where it's due. No, there's a lot of great stuff in the game. Even on it, so once again, PvP, I get it. People, the the flight model is important, but it's not the most important thing to me. I there's a lot of stuff in the game I enjoy doing anyway. So, though I I, I do do want What's a fun. So go ahead. I do want a good flight system because it is a space game too. Yeah. I'm kind of looking forward to atmospheric as well. And I think was it CJ yes. last time we were talking? You were talking about you want to see like ships that can't leave planets, so they have to. Yeah. Go, like I guess like a snub shouldn't be able to go from ground up into yeah. space. Yeah. Like, yeah. So it's something like not like obviously the MPUV, but something like that. It doesn't have a quantum drive. It's got crappy little thrusters or maybe even good thrusters but its sole purpose is atmospheric um, environments so you mentioned in june again the ornithopter if it could go into space <clears throat> but that would be cool to fly around daymar in an ornithopter would be really really nice but I, th I think they need to put some more gameplay into the game that is <sighs> you you've seen the videos of people doing zero to hero I think we should be able to do a game. You should be able to play the game without leaving your planetary system that you spawn in. Mm -hmm. Obviously, not Orison because you're kind of restricted there. But like, if you if you spawn at Lawville, you should be able to get the train to a pad, a vehicle pad, a ground vehicle pad, and then spawn your say ground vehicle, your ornithopter equivalent style vehicle, and then fly around. Like the, the uh, you're not gonna have range, like a hundred k distance maybe, but you should be able to do little missions that are local, and actually have think, that that planet side gameplay loop rather than it being a. I know it's a space game, but I really like that idea because that's a way in which you can make cities like Arkcorp actually flourish, yeah. because you could create entry level points into the game where people don't need to buy ships, but they start off at a city location and they go like you know i want to go into medical gameplay so you start off as like a tier zero medical person which is literally someone that walks around on the streets seeing all these people coming off their nights out throwing up in the back alleys and stuff like that or they're high up on drugs and they're just handing out detox pens and bottles of water and like sachets of food and stuff like that to to help people get back and then you get to a point of reputation where like, okay, you can look after people. You can get an entry level point as like a nurse in a hospital at Arcorp. And then, you know, you go, you, you, you work in a hospital, you're building that reputation up. And then it's like, right, you've proved that. Um, UEEs come in, they've got a medical frigate. You need to be on board there to help with that. And then that's the player's first sort of go onto a ship. Like that would be so cool to have because you know it would it would mean there's more players in those areas which will be needed. I think. I think you shouldn't be able not you shouldn't. Obviously, it's a game. If you want to do it, you can go and do it. Kind of situation, but 
new players into the game with a starter pack shouldn't instantly be able to go into space and content travel somewhere else. They should, like, a, a part of the tutorial should be fly to this outpost, which is like 40 k's away from the city, and do this box mission locally. Um, and give people, like, <clears throat> You, you, everyone's watched Star Wars. You, do you know the lot, all the little, the the people like the in the the little local towns on all the planets. Those people don't leave those cities unless they yeah. get board another ship. It should be like that. Like you should be able to, you should be able to play the game without leaving, like, Lawville. I think you it should be profession based. You know, yeah. like you you have like, you know, if someone be like, okay, like I mentioned, like medical that's more that will be more localized but if you want to do like cargo um you know there'll be if you take the cargo lanes from earth to terra and you're working on a hull e you know um you're helping like an npc ship m move cargo and stuff like that um and those npcs are generating missions on like quanta so you go to the xo and he's like right i just want you to organize the cargo on board the ship before we arrive at this place and you're just building up reputation with that cargo delivery um faction like um that's a new player who hasn't got a ship that's still able to travel um and it could be anything it could be hospitality as well you could be working on an e1 traveling between crusader and microtech for like vips and just like being on the drinks cart <laughs> Mixing cocktails. A uh, mini game, shake the drink. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I, I'm like, big oh, you advocate your drink of this. On this person. I'm a big advocate of this. You your drink on this person. Fleshing out the economy, but not just on pricing and availability, but also the distribution of of manpower and sources or workforce. Um, so there should be a uh, a ship free entry into the game. Um, so you are literally just you choose where you you are born so say area 18 so that's where you're you're born into you have your own hub you you have your very own apartment which can be bought and sold you can work your way up to a penthouse and really sort of give players just that next level edge on the game and like i said working um, essentially that could help out with the quanta you know there's tasks that need to be done do you want to do this and just that lower economic sector could be fleshed out with actual real life players as well. I actually want to purchase that package right now because, like, I like having forty six ships, but a part of me just goes like, oh, I would love that just to like switch between that and then going to that character for an evening and just starting out with nothing. Um, there is something very rewarding in that sort of gameplay. Yeah. Well, we've recently. Well, I I think uh, our newest sorry. member to the org has only a C1. And with many, many ships in the hangar, I'm looking at him like, I want a bit of that. Every now and again. C1 is all you need. Yeah. That is a very nice ship. That is a good that is a ship, ship to have. That, that is a nice only ship to have. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's got three size threes, it's got a nice cargo space, and it's quick, and it looks good. I, I think as a community, we should encourage less people to buy, more people to buy less ships. I think people should have two accounts. Have one where they buy ships. ships and one they play with. <laughs> you can collect here, but you play here. It's a bit like that. It's, um, Top Gear meme, isn't it? I like this, ships. but I love that. <laughs> yeah. But if CRG allowed you to purchase a game package not tied to a vehicle, then that could be a thing. Yeah, no ship citizenship. But because you have to buy, you have to buy a vehicle. Because you have to buy a vehicle, you might as well play with that. Like you might as well be on your main account. But yeah, we yeah. Think we I do. think when Habs come a thing, um, like, and you can actually buy your own apartments and stuff like that on planets, I think that would be an entry level point game. Like you won't need to buy a ship. You can say, oh, I'm going to buy a Hab on Microtech. Done. And it's like you've paid for it. You've paid off the mortgage. You don't have to worry about the rent. It's there. It's yours. Um, but you're going to need to find some way of getting off the planet by doing jobs in that city. So we've got Apple Crow from the org chiming in here. The most important thing in game post-launch will be a good crew. 
we all have these multi crew ships and we'll need people to run them. And he's absolutely right. We've got several massive ships that need crew. You need that lower economical center to to run those ships. You need someone to squab your decks. That's what I'm saying. We need to encourage more mm. more people need to be encouraged to buy less ships. Because we need crew. Yeah. Absolutely. I I'm wondering, and I know this is gonna be incredibly difficult to to action, but um rather than being on a crew of players, I would quite like to be at low level rank but on a on a ship just purely AI and maybe a couple of other players that are also at the same rank level. So you've got like a captain that's an NPC and XO that's NPC. And then I don't know, you could be like deck officer or something like that. And you your mission's just sort of like organizing the the fighters coming in going and stuff like that. And you can rank up and switch your roles or get reassigned to a different ship that's like run by the UEE. Um, but obviously if you get attacked by a player or a, a, a org of like pirates, you get like a group of players running through the ship. Um, they kill the NPCs, but because they find you, they might take pity on you or they might do something awful and throw you out the airlock. But then you, you're in with these pirate guys and you have to sort of negotiate with them. And, you know, that kind of like unpredictable gameplay uh, where it's just started off, <laughs> um, that would be really fun to see. Um, definitely. Well, they are kind of making that game where you're a member of an AI crew. Yeah. Yeah. Squadron. Can't wait for that. But I, I you know, it would be nice to see how well they flesh out AI for for the verse and, and not just blades, but actual like see how well the server's gonna handle them. Terribly. Well, you know where I sit with AI crew, so <laughs> All real job. Real jobs for real people. <laughs> nice. Very American of you. Um, I don't know. As... They took our jobs, man. <laughs> Those that my eye coming in here stealing our jobs. Has anyone done the Daily Stardle? The what? No, we haven't. Oh, you wouldn't have. Wait, what? It's horrendous. It took me seven. It took you seven. Yes. Yeah. Took me seven. Joe, even by doing seven. that, giving us a right. Let's take this to the browser window. It's probably a good way to to be out. So here we are. Yeah, definitely sharp. Okay, CJ, you're not playing. Um, I'm gonna mute. Know. That's fine. Have fun. Ethan, start us off with the, the ship. Uh, I'm gonna guess because I can't actually see anything right now. So uh, let's try the freelancer Max. Okay, you got. Okay, so we know that it's a 2019 release ship with three crew, less than 120 SU of cargo, worth more than 150, is shorter than 38 meters. It is not a medium freight. Hmm. Magnus. Huh, that's a tough one. 120 SU. Under that, cheaper value. No, more expensive. I, I don't know. A van, uh, yeah, it's more expensive. A Vanguard uh, Harbinger. I don't know how many crew that actually has on it. That's that's um two crew, I think. Yeah. Do you know what? I'm gonna go for Nova. I am wrong. It is three crew. Oh, it's 21. I thought it was older than that. Oof. Well, it was good on the year. <laughs> oh, and it's got cargo. I, thought, I, did, I missed that bit. Three crew. Has cargo. So you've got to say that. Three crew. 2019 release it's date. It's so cheeky. It's, it's... Um, manufacturer? Uh, we don't have one yet. It's not a combat, oh, a bomber, or say... a freight ship. And um, what, which manufacturer does it say it's not? 
uh, Tumbral, Aegis, and Misk. Oh, Cause Hibernian says Orison. He says it's a six hundred I, which I think he's. Let's, way let's off give on let's crew. give him a go. Let's say just explorer. This is not an origin ship. So what SCU was it? We don't know. It's less than four more than zero. Three crew with that value. Less than forty-four. <clears throat> It's it's more than more than four hundred and seventy five dollars. Yeah. It uh, has less crew than forty four. I mean less cargo. And it has three crew. But hang on, it's shorter than twenty meters. So is this it's the it digging, redeemer? It? Redeemer. No. no What's the railing? Redeemed. What about the railing? No, it's gonna be longer than twenty meters. That's also unreleased. Yeah. It's oh, true. is it released? Oh, sorry, I missed the release. Yeah, 2019 it came out. So it's an expensive ship. With cargo bits. Try the Redeemer. Oh, well, the Redeemer it's definitely. No, it's Aegis, isn't it? Yeah. It's not that. Yeah. Okay. He's right, um... you know. This is a cheeky one. So we're at five. Let's. Let's. Um... Hmm. Shorter than 20 meters with three crew that is already in game. So it's around $500. <sighs> Got a guess from Chong? What's Chong saying? He says a cutlass. No, the cutlass doesn't cost $500. No, that wouldn't be that. Mm. I'm just trying, trying to remember what happened in 2019. What about that? Uh, what about the? Oh no, it's not an origin, so it's not that. The who is, is it? Oh, is it gonna be an alien ship? Oh, I jo it's not the Prowler, is it? No, nope. it's got it. No, because it has it has cargo. It has more than the two. Uh, and the Prowler's alien, the four hundred. Prowler, oh. and it doesn't have cargo. Crew of three. Hang on, is it gonna be? Crusader, um, Hulk series. No, because it that the Hercules uh, has got oh, it's massive longer, cargo. Yeah, it's longer than twenty meters as well. <sighs> this uh, is a tricky one. So should we should we ask the audience? Yeah, go for it. Audience, what we say? Yeah, yeah. They they've been giving guesses, but. Hmm. I, I honestly don't know. I, what are we missing? I don't want to. I, I hate alien ships, so I don't even want to guess alien ships. And I don't know any cargo alien ships other than the railing, honestly. Or the Do it. Merchant Let man. the hate flow. Do it. So it's not Tumbril. It's going to be Drake. Do it. <laughs> Do it. Could it's it be a ground the... vehicle? Less than 44 SCU. A ground vehicle that costs more than four hundred and seventy-five bucks. Yeah. Oh god, yeah. Fuck. Oh, excuse my French. Um en français. Not the Liberator, because it doesn't have enough cargo space. And it's not it's not released. It's not released, yeah. There's also it that sound, it sounds like a how much was the Nautilus? It's longer than twenty meters. Uh, yeah. Yeah, but oh, it's yeah. not always six hundred and ninety-six pounds. I don't know what it is in this was mind. this was released in two thousand nineteen. It's not the Kraken. I mean Carrick. Carrick. It's again longer than twenty meters. This is shorter than twenty meters. Yeah. What we're looking. I'll give you a tip. No. Sorry. Disregard value. Honestly. Uh, it, that's what that's what wrong, messed me it? up. It's not wrong, but just don't think, don't use the value when you factor it in for it. Just think simple. So it has less than 44 SEU, more than two. It's three people. It's not Should an expedition. 400 ship. I? 
Was it stronger than 20 meters? It could be. The 400 eyes are three. It's not origin. It's not origin either. It's not origin. Okay. So our choices are Drake, uh, Anvil, and not the mole. The mole doesn't have any cargo, right? Um, mole, mole has cargo, but it's uh, mineral cargo, not SCU cargo. Do you think they count that? They do probably ships, yes. Uh, the mole? <laughs> mm. um. God, this is a hard one. Yeah, I can't think of any shit. So, what about... Did we say Anvil? Sorry, if it's repeated, I'm just... I don't have much to see it, because no. I've only got you guys on Discord. No, we don't have an anvil. So it's not anvil. No, no, we don't have anvil. It, it could be an anvil it? ship. And I don't know Spartan what... or something like that. Sorry, an anvil what? The Spartan? Yeah, the troop transport might have a bit more space. How expensive is that, though? Okay, so it oh, is yeah, an anvil. Oh, no, yeah, good point. Yeah, 400. Sorry. Um... It is anvil. It is Anvil. It is. Okay. It's not the spot. All right. So it's a released, a released Anvil ship. The Nova. How many crew is the Carrick? It was out before. Then, how, many crews, how many crews? How many crews? Oh, God. 44 SEU. It's, so the Carrick's got 500 SEU. So it won't be the Carrick. It's not the name um, of the Hyperion, that's Tumbrel. But it's it's Anvil. It's an actual Anvil ship. So Anvil ships, what do we have? The Valkyrie. Valkyrie, check the, yeah. Check the... Although it's a bit bigger Val... than 17 meters. The Valkyrie was $330 when it came out. Yeah, but give it a whirl because I think... No, it's not going to be it. It's longer than 17 Shit, meters. The, um, the Valkyrie Liberator. No. So, like the the tr the troop transport. Right. Let's put liberator in. Um. So not it's the not not, not no, the, the not the ground. You it's... know the big one that can carry ships and stuff. It's, it's not. It's not released. It... Yeah, it's not. That's not been released. So it's. Oh. I'm getting confused because I'm I'm hearing 2019. It yeah, it was released in 2019. It's a released anvil ship with a crew of three that's already in the game. With a value of over 500. Uh, don't worry about that. What do you mean, don't worry about that? Is just, it wrong? Don't worry about that. It's not, no. Just you'll know. That's why it's cheeky. The Terrapin, well, the Terrapin has no cargo, but. Yeah. Character. You can, put a, you can put a javelin in there, by the way, and the value will still say more. So. I'm trying to think off the top of my head all the the not, anvil not, ships. It's not an explorer or, or an expedition ship. It's not a drop ship. It's not a transfer ship. It's not a gun ship. It's not a ship that exists in the game. This is bullshit. It, it is so. It's the so anvil. It's an anvil three crew. And. Round four hundred. Oh my god! I should know this. <laughs> I love. I love Anvil. <sighs> We're the only Anvil ship I'm aware of that costs more. I only say it's not wrong, but don't take into consideration. Would be Carrick, but you only get one variant. It's not going to be. It's not like a... And you said don't worry about how much it costs. You, you need to worry, but it's not... You'll be better Wait, off focusing on. on the other statistics. 
we were talking about the Legionnaire earlier on. What about the Legionnaire? It's not released. It's not. It's re- yeah. Oh. 2019 release. It says release releases year. Is that is it released? It's in game. It has to be released. Yes, it's in game. Flyable. Okay. There's well, not... no. There's no. I'm. I'm. I'm looking at. This isn't a list of ambush ships. <laughs> Yeah, um, honestly, mate, I, I, don't, I, don't, I, I don't know what that is because you know, finding a three-crew Anvil ship that has how much SCU? 44? Do you want, do you want to help? Yes. Less than 44. Okay. It came out the same time as the Carrack. So it's the CAX. Pisces. Nope. Which has got three 16, seats in it, but um... it's not the three-crew. Yeah. It's one of the C8s. Mate, no, that's it's ridiculous. A, it's a, not available for it's sale. It's a C8 that... You cannot buy the base Pisces. How did you guess that, then? Um, because I... You already had went... Anvil. No, I, had, I got Anvil from, from early... But I went to the Carrack, thinking I was clever. Um, it then said more in price, so I went, you know what, fuck it. I'm just going to put the Bengal in there to see whether it's more expensive. And it said the Bengal is not for sale. And it said not for sale. So then I went, well, obviously it's a ship that hasn't been sold. Convenient. And it came out the same year as the Carrack. So I kind of just guessed it was one of the Pisces, one of the variants. Yeah. Well, that is... BS garbage. Yes, it was. It was what is the worst one I've ever done. You Wait, so which Pisces. Pisces was it? Just the Space regular C8. Yeah, and the um, C8 Pisces. But that's not a three crew ship. That's a one crew. It's, it's a, a four. Uh, so yeah, three crew, it's, it's four three, SU. Three, it's a three crew ship. I'm sorry. It's not like there's jump seats in there. That doesn't mean it's crew. It's a Pathfinder. So. All of the seats are usable. It's BS. Cruises. It's BS. Yeah. That's all I'm, I'm saying. Gonna... I mean, it says that the Valkyrie is three crew. I know, sorry, five crew even. With 20 odd jump seats, yeah. So I wouldn't have counted the jump seats either. Never mind. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Cool. So well, we've we'll been going here. for it... an hour and a half. It says here minimum crew one, max crew three. <laughs> so they've gone off their max crew. Rather than their minimum crew, and cargo oh. capacity of four. It's the last thirty which... minutes of the um the podcast was you trying to think Pisces. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But how much SCU did you say? Four. I thought you said forty-four at one point. I was like, no, it went under forty-four. Under forty-four. Okay. Is anyone... I, honestly, the Pisces, the Pisces, shout out to the audience, man. The Pisces is a one crew ship. You need one person for the Pisces. I could keep that ship together myself. Okay. I will send it in to SIG and get them to change it, or people will run. It actually says minimum crew one on, on, the, on the SIG website. Well, there you go. They on RSI. They got it wrong. To make you happy. It's wrong. It's wrong. So, let's go around the table. Anything else from anyone? Oh, this, that control. patch. Oh, go ahead. That patch is pretty exciting. Waiting for it to come out. It's, it's probably going to drop while I'm gone. Guess that's sad, but kind of cool and same, I guess. I get to get back and play it. Just make sure you've got someone ready to yeah. play in your stead to get that upgrade. Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna have to figure something out there. That's the saddest part for me, right? I love the idea that they're doing it. I'm sad that I won't be around to do it. Is there anyone in the org that you would trust? And you don't have to name names, but you just have to say if you trust someone in the org or not. I, I trust a lot of people in the org. Okay, cool. That's brilliant. Um, as long as as long as the person doesn't eat Papa John's pizzas, I'm pretty trustworthy. I have one tonight, so that's broken my heart. <laughs> And I'm not joking, I actually have one tonight, so I'm really disappointed. <laughs> you know, um, I 
I took a 50 50 shot out there that you did and just said it. <laughs> the fact that you're targeting me that way really, really makes me feel self conscious now. <laughs> it makes me feel I'm hungry. Calling that number, just thinking about you, just sweating. <laughs> um, but honestly, I'm really excited. I mean, for where this event is going. Um, I think we're running up to blockade. Um, Nine Tails Lockdown was one of my favorite uh, events. And when they took it away, I was a bit sad about that. But looking to see how they modernized it. And it will be the first event that we'll be using with master modes. So it'll be nice to see how fleet actions work with master modes. Um, so that's going to be fun. I'm hoping I can steal the components off the F7 Alpha, like you used to be able to with the Eckhart mission. So as long as I can get the ball turret and the nose turret off an F7 Alpha and put it on my F7 Ghost still, then I'll be happy. All I hear is don't trust CJ around your F7A. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Leave it for a minute and your ship's going to be on bricks. Oh, no. <laughs> okay. CJ. What you want, Doc? Don't, uh, don't shut off this thing without you saying anything. Um, there's a lot of interesting stuff, a lot of exciting stuff, a lot of stuff to explore. Don't know quite how they're going to do the exploration stuff. Um, there's a lot of ideas that I'd like to have, but no idea how I would implement them, such as the uh, the gaining of knowledge and, okay, I can land this ship on this planet, but can I get it off of that planet? I mean, is are you going to be held in atmosphere? Are you then going to have to get someone to come pick you up? Like, is that knowledge valuable? How do you then sell that information to someone else? Like, so yes, you can land that particular ship on that planet or that size of ship. You just can't. Um, yeah, not going to also, be going into caves. The, birds. the boids. The birds. The boids. The boids. Magnus, how would you say bird? Well, I would say bird, but boids are what they're called. Mm -hmm. they're, it's actually the te technical term for animals that aren't technically physical. Yeah, boids I, like, and dwarves. I, 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 I studied film for a bit, so I would like to do a black and white um, Star Citizen, um, like Alfred Hitchcock, the boids. <laughs> <laughs> and just like cut it like the birds and and see how that that's run by the community just some r really weird weird stuff oh, brilliant so yeah anything else i think hangers excited hangers 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 are super exciting they are 323 is going to be the patch of hoarding star yes. map the star map all right, we could go on all day on this. We really could. All right, it's been a pleasure. <laughs> Lots of things to be excited for. Uh, we have been, because you've been amazing and.